My introduction to the Moog synthesizer was I went into a shop in Soho in London and uh, the, the record seller uh, said I might be interested in this album which is by Walter Carlos and it was uh, the Switched on Bark album. I'd um, done an arrangement actually of the Bark Brandenburg Concerto in G and uh, on, on this same album was um, was a version of this, but it, it sounded, I couldn't understand what the instrument was. On the cover of the album was uh, a thing which looked like a telephone switchboard. And uh, it fascinated me actually. I didn't know what the instrument was about. And, um, managed to check up on it, and I had my manager, Tony Stratton-Smith at the time, um, look into it. And um, found there was um, some guy had one somewhere in London, and I managed to hire it for a concert, which I played with an orchestra. And we were doing bits of 2001, and uh, the, the, the Mike Vickers was his name, and he said, well, I need to be on stage to program it because it's, it really isn't meant to, for live performance. It's a studio instrument. So, uh, so fine, okay. So uh, it proved a great success in the concert with the orchestra. I think we would, you know, not only were we doing bits of music from um, Kubrick's 2001, we were doing bits of Leggetti and, and the Moog made all these wonderful noises. And uh, so I just thought, I've got to get one of these. And uh, when I formed Emerson, Lake and Palmer in the 70s, I managed to contact uh, the, the Moog company. They were then based in Buffalo, in uh, New York, just outside New York. And um, it cost me a lot of money. I think it cost about 30,000 pounds, which, uh, but somehow we had a record deal and um, we had some money to be able to buy this. Mm piece of equipment and I remember it arrived in London and I just uh, got it out of the box very excited but I, I just didn't know how to plug it in. It was a nightmare, it really was. So I took it to Mike Vickers and uh, left it with him for about a week and he, he managed to sort it out and uh, those are the first sounds that uh, I utilised in pictures and an exhibition and uh, became kind of like the standard norm, I suppose, for, for my music. And uh, I think really, in a way, the Moog synthesizer defined what we know it today as progressive rock music. <laughs> So the new album project is labeled what? It's the Three Fates Project. The th One, two, three. And this is Play No Evil, Conduct No Evil, and Produce No Evil. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are you happy at least that your synthesizer is working here? Well, it, this is a marvelous piece, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it is. Yes, yes. Yes. Where is Ken? And not, Ken. not only that, not only that, yeah, yeah. Where's not Ken? only that, but hell, Ken is actually back here somewhere. Friday was a slew of people all wanting yeah. to disturb me and take nothing but pictures oh, with I this see. thing. Yes, Ken, right. can you come out? <laughs> no, I don't want to come out. Well, you just loosened a couple of. Hey, Ken, get it, get it. As long as Keith remembers how to operate it, that's, that's the frightening true. part of it. Yes, but there's no place like Gnome. <laughs> there is no place like Gnome. That's right. Well, Keith, yeah. just in case, you know, we've got a really awesome mini mode. You can be happy to borrow. We'll be happy to loan it to you just in case. Yes. <laughs>